William, a soon-to-be-retired crime detective, is getting ready to go to work. At the crime scene, a body lies on the floor, apparently killed by a gunshot by his wife after an argument. As he scans the area, Detective David shows up looking for him. He is William's new partner and newly transferred. While walking, William asks him why all the effort to get transferred here because he has never seen anyone do it before. David replies saying he wants to do some good. William warns David to watch and listen carefully when they work together for the next seven days. It's Monday morning, day one. David says goodbye to his wife Tracy and goes to investigate a case with William. They go inside a dirty, tattered house and check around. In the dining is an obese guy with his face down on a plate of spaghetti. When William further checks the body, he sees that the guy's hands and feet are tied with barbed wire. Unable to concentrate with David's babbling, William asks him to help the officers to interrogate the neighbors. As they ride back home, David expresses that he is not happy with how he is being treated and asks him to be taken more seriously, as he is also a detective. Later, they are informed that the man has been dead for quite a while and he was forced to eat until he burst. His stomach stretches and is bleeding internally. The bruises on his head indicate someone pressing a gun hard on his head. According to the coroner, the man was forced to feed for more than 12 hours and his throat was swollen. When he passed out, the killer kicked him and he burst inside. William concludes that if the killer wanted the man dead, then he would have just shot him. But the killer took his own sweet time to kill the man, hinting at a hidden meaning and suspects that there will be more murders. The captain disagrees with him and says that someone just wanted to torture and kill a fat man. David protests and argues when William tells the captain that David is not ready to take this case as his first assignment. The captain agrees with William and reassigns David. On day two, David reaches a high-profile murder scene, where a defense attorney, Eli is murdered with greed written on the floor with his blood. David observes that his wife's picture on the table has glasses painted on it. The captain visits William and tells him about the attorney's murder and the word greed written with blood. He also tries to convince William not to retire, but William says he does not understand this place anymore and is keen on leaving. The captain leaves a container sent by the coroner that contains little pieces of plastic found in the fat man's stomach. Before leaving, he adds that the plastic pieces were fed to him. Curious, William returns to the fat man's house and checks around. He finds the scrapped floor as he tries to close the fridge. Realizing it's scrapped because of moving the refrigerator, he checks behind and finds gluttony written on the wall with a note. Williams shows the note to the captain that says, Long is the way and hard that out of hell leads up to light. The captain is confused but William explains that it means it's the beginning. He describes the seven deadly sins. Gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. He tells the captain that there will be five more murders but he can't get involved in it and walks off. He hails a cab to the library, reads books, and takes copies related to the seven sins while David looks at the pictures of the murders and scratches his head. Tracy watches from behind, concerned. Once William is done, he puts the copies in an envelope and leaves it on David's desk. On day three, David goes into his new office but finds William working on his desk. He moves to the other desk politely as David comes inside. Then he gets a call from Tracy, asking to speak to William. He tells David that Tracy has invited him for supper. Later, they both go to David's apartment for dinner and Tracy welcomes William warmly. They have small talks at the dinner table and Tracy asks William why he isn't married. He says he came close to getting married but it didn't happen surprising Tracy. After dinner, the men discuss the attorney's murder and David shows him a picture with a scale that has a pound of the victim's flesh and a note that says, a pound of flesh no more no less, no cartilage, no bones, but only flesh. William spreads out the pictures and says the trick is to find one item, one detail, and focus on it. They still can't figure out how the killer has no witnesses or fingerprints left behind and the victims are unrelated. When David shows him the picture of the attorney's wife, William thinks that maybe the glasses signify something she is supposed to see but hasn't given a chance. William says that's the one thing they should focus on. They immediately leave to see the lawyer's wife kept at a safe house. The pictures are shown to her and David asks her to check if anything is out of place or seems strange. She points out that the painting is upside down. Wasting no time, they both go to the lawyer's office and check the painting thoroughly but can't find any clue. David says that the killer is just messing with them but William believes that there should be something. He climbs up the table and checks the wall meticulously. To David's surprise, William finds fingerprints. After the print lab guy checks the fingerprints, they are surprised to see the fingerprints forming the words, help me. While waiting for the fingerprints to match, William asks David if he was serious when he told the lawyer's wife that he will catch the killer. When David says yes, William adds that after years of working, he realizes that their job is picking up the pieces, collecting all the evidence, pictures, samples, and writing everything down just to be put into piles and filed away on the off chance that it will ever be needed in the courtroom. On day four, the captain wakes them up saying they have found a match of the fingerprints. A 
person by the name of Victor who has a serious mental illness and has a history of drugs, armed robbery, and assault but William and David do not believe this guy Victor to be the killer. They rush to Victor's apartment with the SWAT team, all geared up to arrest the guy. The SWAT team breaks inside the apartment with a bang and scans every room. Finally, they find someone lying on the bed with the sheets over him. When they pull the sheet, they find Victor lying, strapped to his bed with sloth written on the wall right above the bedhead. David finds a pile of pictures and finds out that he has been strapped for exactly a year. Everyone gets startled when one of the men goes closer and finds him still alive. The victim is taken away and David is visibly upset and angry. William tells him that the killer is playing games and he should keep his emotions in control. Right then, a reporter takes pictures of them making David more agitated and lashes out at him. Later, the doctor informs them that Victor is in no condition to recover. His brain is a mush and he has chewed off his own tongue. Later at night, William receives a call from Tracy asking him to meet her the next day. On day five, Tracy confides to William how much she hates the city but don't want to tell David and be a burden. She also tells him that she is pregnant and has yet to tell Mills. She feels it is no place to raise a child. Somerset sympathizes, having had a similar situation with his ex-girlfriend many years back, and advises her to tell Mills only if she plans to keep the child. Back at the office, William and David discuss the murders, making David restless and calling the killer a lunatic. William disagrees with him and tells David that the killer is methodical and patient. Having the will to keep a man bound and alive for a year, severe his hand to plant the fingerprints and make them find the victims exactly on the day that he wanted them to. He reads the first note the killer left, which is a quote from a book, and tells David that this is exactly what he wanted. David still argues saying just because the killer has a library card does not make him a Yoda. William freezes for a few seconds and takes David to the library. He prints the names of the books related to the seven deadly sins and gives them to a person with some cash. The person remarks what he is doing is risky but promises to give the names in an hour. Later, while waiting for the list, William tells David that the person he gave the list of books names to is with the FBI. He explains that certain books are flagged and those people who check out the flag books have their library card details fed to the FBI computers. The person comes and gives the list to them. As they check the list out in the car, William finds a guy by the name of John Doe suspicious since he checked the book the writings of St. Thomas Aquinas, the person who wrote the book on the seven deadly sins. They rush to John Doe's house and knock on the door, but there's no answer. While waiting, a guy comes with grocery bags drawing William's attention. He quickly takes a gun out and shoots at them. David pursues him as runs down the stairs. The guy escapes from a window of an apartment. So David goes after him, leading them to the busy roads and to a small alley. While he scans the area, he is suddenly hit in the head, knocking off his gun. He is held at gunpoint by the guy, but he runs away without shooting him. They are back at John Doe's door, but William does not allow David to force enter the apartment as it can land them both in trouble. They argue about it, but William calms him down and explains that they have no reason to come here in the first place as they got the name illegally and they don't have a warrant to enter the apartment. David breaks down the door out of anger anyway, but they decide to hire a junkie to tell a fake story that she called Detective William as she found a guy suspicious and creepy. Now, with a legitimate warrant, they enter John Doe's dimly lit apartment. As they look around the place, William sees the same spaghetti sauce from the obese victim's house and Victor's hand from which he used the fingerprint. Next to it is a receipt from a leather shop and a photo of a blonde woman. William then enters a room full of books while David finds a room with pictures of his victims hanging. William finds a handwritten notebook of the killer that explains minute details of how his plans are executed. David's call startles him and he runs to him to find out that the news photographer earlier is the killer. Adding to the woes, the forensic team cannot find any fingerprints or anything significant related to him, except for some cash and receipts. Meanwhile, William is reading one of the killer's diaries when David comes and asks him if he has found anything. William says it will take about two months for 50 people to read all the diaries in the room and the books are not in order and have no dates. Just then, a phone rings making David search for it frantically. It is the killer and he speaks in a calm voice telling David how surprised he is that they found him. He apologizes for hurting him earlier and tells him he will have to make a few readjustments in his schedule because of the setbacks he faced. While checking for clues, David agrees with William that the killer is preaching and the murders are his sermon to the people. They now focus on the blonde's picture as the others are already executed. On day six, they go to the leather shop with the receipt they found. The guy gives them the photo of the item John Doe had ordered which surprises them both. Right then William gets a pager saying the blonde woman has been found and they quickly make their way to a crowded brothel. On the door, the word lust is written, and inside is the dead blonde with a guy screaming to get the thing off of him. Later at the station, William is talking to the guy who is still traumatized, while David questions the brothel's manager. William throws the picture of the item that John Doe had ordered at the leather shop and asks the guy who made him do it. Still in shock, the guy tells him that John Doe had a gun in his throat and forced him to do the deed. Later at the bar, 
They both have a drink and William remarks that this case is not going to have a happy ending. But David says he will be happy enough if he catches John Doe. William goes on to say that he does not want to live in a place where people nurture and embrace apathy, where stealing is easier than earning it or losing to drugs than coping with life. But David disagrees with him saying the people they are dealing with are crazy and mentally ill people. He adds that William is quitting because he believes in what he just said but he believes in them because he is quitting. This statement by David gets him thinking. David goes back home, lies down and tells Tracy he loves her very much while William is unable to sleep pondering on what David told him earlier. On day 7, 911 receives a call from the killer saying he has done it again. This time, it is a young beautiful woman, murdered on her bed with pride written on the wall. David finds one of her hands glued to a sleeping pill bottle while the other is glued to the telephone. They find her nose sliced and then bandaged. William tells David that he wants to stay until they get John Doe and before the other murders are committed or else the case will go on for years. As they go into the precinct, a cab pulls over and a man gets down following them inside. The man gets their attention when he calls out for them loudly. David is filled with wrath when he sees John Doe but Doe willingly lets them arrest him and asks for his lawyer. While Doe talks to his lawyer, the captain briefs them both that he has been cutting the skin off the tips of his fingers for a while now, hence why they could not find any traceable fingerprints. He has no credit history, no employment records but he is wealthy and well-educated. David wants to question him but the captain says he cannot since Doe will be taken to the court. David tells the captain that Doe is just fooling them and something is up his sleeves as he will not just give himself without any purpose. William agrees with David and says that he is two murders away from completing his masterpiece and he just won't stop before that. Later, they listen to the plea from Doe's lawyer. He says there are two bodies hidden away and he is willing to take only William and David to the bodies at 6 p.m. If they do not agree to this then the bodies will never be found and he will plead insanity across the board. But if they agree under his specific conditions, then he will make a full confession and plead guilty to the crimes. William and David agree to the terms and get ready to escort him to the place he wants. With wires and bulletproof vests, the three of them get in the car and drive off with a chopper flying above them and giving them aerial updates. During the drive, William asks Doe who he is but he says it does not matter who he is and it means nothing. He adds that he is not special but his works are. When David remarks that nobody is going to remember or care what he has done after two months, Doe says they haven't seen the final act yet and when it's done they will remember, adding that he cannot wait to show it to them. Doe expresses his lack of remorse for his crimes, declaring that his victims deserve to die and were not innocent. He professes himself to be a martyr chosen by a higher power to shock the world out of its state of apathy. David still thinks that Doe is insane but he says that the only reason he is here right now is because he wanted to be and David is still alive because he spared his life. They reach their destination, a deserted place with just an old trailer parked. They both are confused as they look around and see nothing. David gets him out of the car and Doe leads them off the road. As they walk, William sees a van speeding towards them. William runs towards the road while David holds Doe at gunpoint. He gets in the car, drives forward, blocks the road, and points the gun at the van. The driver gets out and tells William that he has been paid to deliver a package here for Detective David Mills at exactly 7 p.m. The driver gets the package out and hands it over to William. He lets the driver go on foot and tells his team to pick him up. Though hesitant, William opens the package and is shocked at what it has inside. Doe taunts David as curiosity creeps over him. William looks at David, back to the box, and is stunned for a moment. He tells the chopper not to come further in and says John Doe has the upper hand. William rushes towards them. David is still confused and can't hear what William is trying to tell him because of the distance. Doe tells David how much he admires him and his pretty wife, Tracy. Shock at his words, David can't understand why Doe is talking about his wife. But Doe continues to say that he went to his house in the morning and met his wife Tracy. He tried to play husband and tried to taste the life of a simple man but it didn't work out. So he took a souvenir, Tracy's pretty head. As David accuses Doe of lying, William reaches and asks David to give him his gun, but David wants to know what's in the box. Doe continues saying he envies David's simple life and it seems envy is his sin and asks David to seek vengeance on him and become the sin of wrath. William tells David that Doe's plan is to get killed by him and if he does that, Doe wins. Doe continues to taunt David revealing that Tracy begged for her life and the life of the baby inside her. David is stunned and looking at his face Doe realizes that David does not know Tracy was pregnant. David breaks down and cries, William tries to convince him not to shoot Doe and make him win. But emotion and grief get over David and he shoots Doe several times, killing him and completing Doe's plan. Later, David, still distraught, sits in the car and is taken away. The captain tells William that they will take care of David. When the captain asks him where he will be, William says he will be around. 